regarding portrait painting, we've already discussed it a little bit uh, in general, but especially when looking at early portrait works, we're, we're actually not always looking at true portraits. We're actually looking at representations of somebody uh, that doesn't have to be historically accurate or true to their actual facial characteristics. So, but when we're looking at uh, at early paintings of, of individuals, sure we can divide things up uh, between the the general schools of uh, Nyingma, Sakya, Kagyu, and um, for early schools we have to include Kadam as well. Um, Jonang is a little bit too late for this, and uh, Gelug is definitely too late um, for early portraiture. Now. In, in terms of uh, um, dividing it up further and trying to um, sort of carve out uh, areas of study, then we really have uh, three that can be looked at um, in, in a fairly coherent way um, without uh, really spreading too thin. Now, the, the, the first uh, is, we can say, is we can uh, just start right off with, uh, with the karma kagyu. Um, and with the Karmakagyu, we would start with the really the first uh, three Karmapas. Uh, we would start with the uh, Dusum Kempa, uh, Karmapakshi, and Rongjung Dorje. And so that covers a span of really, I mean, in terms of their lives, it's like 1110 until about 1339, uh, 1340. So, but we're really looking at the, at the art from the um, 13th, and really into the 14th century with the the paintings of these three characters so so that would be the first uh, grouping really to look at and there's three groupings the first grouping really would be the karma kagyu and looking at at the defining characteristic of the karma kagyu also known as the karma kamsang the defining characteristic is karmapa now the second would be uh, Pakdru, Pakdru Kagyu. Uh, Pakdru Kagyu is uh, named for Pakmodrupa, uh, one of the major students also of Gampopa. Um, and from Pakdru, uh, uh, Pakmodrupa, we get the Taklung, Drikung, Drukpa, uh, etc. Um, we get a number of different uh, of uh, later uh, traditions of Kagyu. So we do have a lot of early paintings of Pakmodrupa himself, plus his main students. So this also creates one grouping. Now, the third grouping is, uh, is really the, the, the Kun family of the Sakya tradition. Now, the, the Kun are, are actually the, the precursors to Sakya. Sakya itself wasn't uh, developed until the late uh, 11th century, uh, and it was based on the uh, new tantras coming from India. New tantras meaning the Hevajra, Chakra Sambara, Guya Samaja, Vajra Bhairava, Kala Chakra. These are basically the, the, the main, uh, most important of, of the new tantras. Yes, we can throw in others, Mahamaya, Buddha Kapla, there's others, uh, but the main one. So, so that is really the corpus of the, of the highest yoga tantra of the, of the new um, uh, Buddhism, the Sarma tradition that came into Tibet in the, uh, really in the uh, 11th century. So, so we, with the Kun family, what we're looking at is we're looking at uh, uh, a consistency of of individuals who belong to one uh, very tight, very clear tradition, and it's a uh, patriarchal. It, it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, a bone tradition, as they say in in Tibet, rather than uh, uh, blood tradition. It's a bone tradition of the Kun family. And so, with the Kun family, uh, what we can do is we can look at very early works from like the 12th century, uh, 13th, 14th. But we can then also be looking at middle and late period works. So, looking at the Kun family as one group of portrait art, as opposed to looking at the Karma Kagyu and the first three Karmapas, and looking at the the uh, Pakdru Kagyu, and looking at the early 
works there. Uh, the, the difference is is just um, early works as opposed to late works, but the Kun family is we're able to look at one uh, sort of body continuous line that makes sense. So so in terms of, of looking at, at um, um, groupings of portrait works, then, then these three are the ones that make the most sense uh, are the Karma Kagyu, Pakdru Kagyu, and Kun family uh, lineage.